Hi, everyone. Welcome to episode 37 of the All Dolphin podcast on YouTube. I can't believe you keep count. Like I do. I don't know why. Okay, or I could say the Tuesday, August 8th, 2023 edition. The first joint practiced edition of the uh, All Dolphins podcast. On YouTube, the Miami Dolphins Insider Podcast, wherever you get your podcasts on the Fans First Sports Network. Uh, as we mentioned, it was joint practice number one today with the Atlanta Falcons at the Baptist Health Training Complex. Unfortunately, as as if you recall, when we did joint practices in Carolina a few years back, we had dueling injuries where the card came out. You remember that? I, you, you got, you yeah, a, I do remember it. It was Delmas and somebody else. And somebody from for Carolina, I think it was a prominent player to wide receiver. Um uh, big wide receiver from Florida State. I, I believe I could be wrong. Oh anyway. yeah. The this really the tight end guy that was really a tight end. There right. you go. Well, today yeah. was Braylon Edwards for the Dolphins, the second year wide receiver. And then for the Falcons, it was rookie cornerback Clark Phillips the third. We're not going to speculate on the injury, just the fact that the card had to come out. Clearly not a great sign. Um also want to make the point that because these are joint practices where there's 11 on 11 going on on both fields at the same time, I focus on the Dolphin offense versus the Atlanta defense. You focused on the Dolphin defense versus the Atlanta offense. Yes. And you gave me the choice and the honor of selecting what I wanted. Um, I purposely chose defense. I really don't know why, but I just didn't want to be heavily obsessed about two and the quarterbacks. Um, unfortunately they had a not so good day, um, from what I'm told. And I did watch some of the plays, the interceptions, give them the interception sack total and, and red zone evaluation. Yeah. And this is what bad you picked a good day not to watch the quarterbacks because it wasn't good. None of them were good. And the final tally, cause we keep every play on play by play during team sessions, whether it be, whether it be regular situations or two minute drill or red zone, and again, these are unofficial approximates for the yardage because they don't tackle to the ground. So you don't know. There's also the issue of sex. So that having said all that, the ballpark numbers combined for the three quarterbacks was something along the lines of 19 for 32 for 193 yards, no touchdowns, three picks. And if you put those numbers together to calculate the passer rating, it comes out to about 37.6, which we all know in there is now. not good. But Put the sacks in there now. Oh, I'm sorry. And they were four sacks. But, and and I'm going to go ahead and say I was shocked that when I gave you the choice that you wouldn't go with the offense because I thought you'd want to, you'd want to focus and zero in on the offensive line. But that's perfectly uh, fine. There were four sacks. But can I tell you why I didn't choose the offense? Let me Before you do that, let me just point out very importantly that I scored two of those as clear coverage sacks, not where the offensive lineman got beat. So the pass protection was not terrible. Go ahead. Okay. I chose the defense. One is a sacrifice of self for you, because I know you want to watch the offense. Uh, and, and and more importantly, uh, I wanted to see, because I, I've been watching Christian Wilkins, and you know how I feel about him. I like him. He's improved every single year. But the play has just drastically elevated itself to – elite status in Dominican Sioux realm of, of production and disruption. And I need to know if this was just the offense or offensive line, or if it's really Christian. Now to make that point, I really only saw him the first series of 11 on 11. Mm-hmm. Um, whether this was the Miami Dolphins being kind to Christian, giving him a rest day, getting a better evaluation of everybody else. They need to get a better evaluation of, I don't know. Or Christian just like, you know, or or maybe you don't want to, you know, have Christian cool off against a better offensive line. I don't know what the reason was, but um, I thought the defensive line kind of helped win the day for the Miami Dolphins offense. I will say watching the Falcons, Desmond Ritter's not a good quarterback. Uh, and this is off day one. He reminds me a lot of Chad Henney when I used to watch Chad Henney's practices where it is check down city. Mm-hmm. Now, do I know if his receivers are getting open? No. Do I know if Kyle Pitts, how much Kyle Pitts was working? No, I wasn't paying attention to any of those things. But it was check down after check down after check down after check down. 
So we got a lot of action to linebackers because and players in the flat because that's really all we saw. Taylor Heineke had the best pass of the day, which was about a 50, 50 yarder. B. Camp Smith and Bray, Bray, Brandon Jones. Um, it was just a beautiful pass. It really was a beautiful pass. Um, I don't know if perfect if perfect coverage could have allowed them to 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 stop it. Uh, but the offense didn't look good. But Miami contained the run game. Miami got sacks. Um, and Miami got turnovers. And overall, I would give the defense a victory on, on the day against the Falcons. Yeah, and then the other way around, it was clear, a clear win for the Atlanta defense against the Dolphin offense. Um, look, there were some completions. There are going to be completions in a practice. That's going to happen. There, there were, I think... Mike White had a really, really nice throw down the field between defenders to Braxton Berrios. Tua had a nice completion uh, in a little bit of a crowd to Robbie Chose and had another hook up, hooked up with Tyree Kill a couple of times. But there was not a whole lot sustaining against him. Again, the numbers are the numbers. And 19 for 32 with three picks is, is never going to get it done. Um, and the offensive line held its own in the one-on-ones. Uh, there were some issues. I, I know you, you're you're not going to want to hear this, or maybe you want to hear this, but Liam Eikenberg again struggled. There was one rep where he got beat bad, and I mean bad. There was one rep Austin Jackson took again against, I want to say, number 99. I have to look at my... Joe Gaz- Gazzano. I want it, yes, because he's an uh, free agent, undrafted free agent rookie. Oh, man. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Yeah, if that's Sorry, the one... he's a four-year vet. He's a four-year vet, but he was added as a free agent. Go, Joe Gazzano. Okay, it was one rep. No, it was uh, that one. Literally, the way I have it in my notes is 73, which who was Austin Jackson, whiffed on 99. It was a quick spin move to the inside. Oh, oh 73 whiffed on 99. I heard yeah, no, no, 90, he, I mean he I barely... heard 99 got Liam Eikenberg. No, 99 got Austin Jackson, and he barely got a hand on it on a quick spin move to the inside. I mean, it, it was it was bad flip side to that. And Connor Williams had a hard time too. And even had one, I don't think I'd ever seen that before. He sailed a shotgun snap on that one-on-one drill. I don't think I've ever seen that before. That's, that's weird. Uh, and even I, you I saw him rep. get beat. I saw him get beat. I think Grady Jarrett, I was sneaking on look over there, which is not a terrible shame to get, bit, to get yeah. beat by Grady Jarrett. The flip side is Robert Hunt was good in that drill. I had Robert Jones had one rep where he stood up his guy, which was good. And Dan Feeney, for what we want to say about him and how he's looked in training camp. Whenever I watch that drill, Dan Finney, his one loss record's got to be, I mean, up there. It's up there. He wins that drill consistently. And then once the practice started, again, I, I can't watch the, the line the entire time through the duration of the player. I'm going to miss what happens with the ball. And, you, and I know that's not being a ball watcher. You got to watch. Where, uh, that's how, why we work well together. It, yeah. And I, I can tell you what happened at the line. You can tell me what, because I usually don't see what happened with the ball. No, correct. But, but in this particular case, since we're both responsible for one side of the field, I couldn't do that. But from what I saw, I, I stick with the offensive line as long as I can. I didn't see anything egregious. There was one sack. I, the, the four sacks, again, like I said, two were clear coverage sacks. There was one where I have is the left tackle got beat, not egregiously, but he got beat. I, I don't know who it was. And then there was another one where it was kind of like a group thing where the two guys on the left side of the line kind of, there was a communication mix up where they let, I think it may have been 99 again. They let him go through to the quarterback, but it wasn't terrible. There was some, some nice run blocking as well. And mm-hmm. you'll be happy to know that Devon A-Chain had perhaps the most impressive run Touchdown. in the in in a in a red zone goal line situation where not only was there a nice crease but once he got to like the one yard line he it was powered it through path. yep he lowered his shoulder and he kind of ran into the guy I saw that, that I snuck I snuck a look over there um I, I a poop makes me feel like I'm being disobedient when I'm looking at offense I also noticed a Moster Moster had a good run that today was probably my most in day that I was most impressed with Moster um I'm great. I'm okay with him. I know he had like nearly 1,100 yards last year combined, but, you know, I, I'm just okay with him. But today he looked like an NFL starter to me. No, no, I, I agree. But to me, the concern, if we're talking about the Dolphin offense based off the scrimmage on Saturday and the practice today, 
is did the passing game is is kind of out of sync. And my and, and mentioned the three quarterbacks. Um I don't think any of them were particularly sharp. Probably two probably was probably the best of the three. We need uh, to point out that one barely got any reps. Yeah, and that was Skyler. And then Skyler in his reps, we used one for three with one pick. And the pick was butt ugly. It was near, it was, a, it was like started at the six or seven yard line where I don't know what he saw, but his receiver was covered and there was a defender between him and, and the quarterback in the corner of the end zone. And they, I don't know if he tried to force it in there or what he saw. And it was an easy pick. Um, the two a pick came in that same drill and there were four, the four closest guys to the ball when, when it was intercepted were Atlanta defenders. Like Freddie Swain ran a slant and I don't know if he was supposed to stop or he was supposed to cut back outside or what, but it was like nowhere near. And then the Mike White interception is again, it was a two minute drill. It was the last play for the offense. And he tried to go down the field to Braxton Berrios and didn't see uh, a DB, I don't know if it was a DB or a linebacker sitting in his own right in the middle, right where he was throwing. And it was, thank you very much, easy pick. Uh, but the passing game just flat out wasn't particularly sharp and it wasn't great Saturday either. So it'd be nice if that got into gear a little bit. Still, still a long way to go, but. Yeah, I mean, are we really worried about the passing game considering how potent and efficient it was last year? Uh, well, this that. is where. This is where I might point out that when we went to Tampa for the joint practices against the, the, the Buccaneers, they were lighting it up. Yes, they were. So they were carving that up as the a bus. point of reference. That would be maybe a little bit of a concern if in the grand scheme of things, yeah, we're a month away from the start of the regular season. Simmer down, chill out. Hoopar, you're being an old grumpy old guy. Relax. But if we're going to compare again to where they were last summer at this time, they're not there. That's fair. Uh, I'm not going to argue. You can't have two back-to-back -back days where the performance is kind of dismal. You want to see consistency. I think you're getting that from the defense, even though the defense has some issues. Uh, you know, we, we talk about depth at the defensive line. We could talk about depth at, at inside linebacker or level of production that you're getting from that position. You can talk about what's going on at safety. You can talk about the auditions at cornerback. So the defense is still having issues. Now, it's not necessarily impacting their performance. But also, I want to point out, there is a lot more rotation, rotating going on in this offense than there was last year's offense in Tampa Bay. Last year's offensive units were set. Guys had their quarterbacks. Guys had their receivers. Quarterbacks had their receivers. Each unit had their linemen. And you didn't see... You, 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 you didn't see all this rotating that we see now. And I'm not saying that... I'm opposed to the rotation because that's how you build chemistry for everybody in your unit. And that's how you, you, you sort of raise the stakes and see who can, who can elevate their level of play. But because you would, and give you a perfect example, wouldn't you like to see Cam Smith against Tyreek Hill? I, I think everybody would. Every, it's beneficial for Cam Smith. Is it not? Yeah, sure. And I don't want to ruin the kid's confidence. And, and I'll point out, I'll point out like, the clip that's making the rounds on social media today of the half field one-on-one -on -one where Tyree kill just abused the defensor, the yeah. defender, Trey flowers. And I'm like, I mean, really, we're going to make a big deal about, but who can cover and, yeah. Tyree kill and one-on-one -on -one half the field. And on. Anybody listening to us knows how we feel about one-on-ones. It's a very defensive slant, I mean, the, the offensive heavy slanted drill. The quarterback doesn't throw the ball to the receiver until he's open. You could double move the cornerback all day long and it is what it is. Um, so yeah, I, that's, that's part of the reason why and people are like, oh, how do you not watch one-on-ones? Well, I don't watch one-on-ones cause they really don't tell me anything. Um, th that one-on-ones, I, I, I did want to sneak a couple looks. Uh, I didn't get to see the, the running backs. I wanted to see the pass protection. If a chain could do pass protection against the Falcons. I didn't get to see it because I don't think they the did hand. it. I don't think they did. I think they just ran routes. Oh, no, they did it. They, they, they were doing it. They were doing it. And they they did it, and then they would run routes. And I don't know if they ever went back to pass protection. So I was like, I, it was very confusing. It was like a half half route, half protection. And I was like, what are you doing? But then you were like, watch defense, watch defense. 
And I was like, okay, let me go watch <laughs> defense. <laughs> That's funny. I'm a taskmaster. And I was trying to watch like the, the O-lineman versus the D-lineman. Or the, there's only so many things you can watch. It's impossible. Yeah, I mean, it's so much going on on the field, especially yeah. joint practices, which is why it's so important to have two people because, you you know, like Tampa last year, literally – there was you chose one field or you chose the other from mm -hmm. in the dolphin situation you could watch both fields at the same time you could technically watch it at the same time you can't watch it well in tampa you get one or the other you don't get to choose Correct. so either you want to watch the offense or you want to watch the defense so um i don't know how it's going to be in houston but yeah it's uh, unfortunately but a different story <laughs> yeah um I would like to single out and give some praise to a young man that I have learned his number. Um, he was and, practicing and his name and his name at, at Brandon Peely. Whoa, there you go. And, and, but the only reason that I've learned his number, and I'm I'm going to I'm going to be honest about it, is you're because cheating. you're looking at the roster. Of course, no, 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 no. no I'm looking at the roster. I just wanted to double check. The only reason I know his number is because he's a Samoan and he wears Paul Solei's number. Yes, so right. I always. Connected as, you know, okay, that's Peely. He's the Samoan. He's the smaller Paul Solia. He's not really Paul Solia. Um, but Brandon Peely, Christian Wilkins did not take his usual reps. Brandon Peely got elevated because of this, was playing, I'm not going to say with what unit, and was whooping tail and taking names. Uh, I have him for one sack, two tackles for loss, and he had an additional tackle that was close to the line of scrimmage. I didn't know. I didn't want to give it a TFL because, you know, I'm not just throwing around TFLs, even though you think I just throw around sacks. You, correct. Like, so you just limit it to sacks? Okay, sorry. It, it, you get a sack. You get a <laughs> sack. You get a sack. See, for those who don't know, um, Hoop will say I'm the most generous sack giver. You're the I sack opera. You're the sack opera. I, I disagree. I am the line watcher. So I will give credence to a young man who is working hard to get the pressure. If you are in the backfield and you slow down and you're close to the quarterback and he has not thrown the ball for one second, I will give you a sack unless the ball is completed. And I think it's going to be a dolphin highlight. <laughs> oh, oh, that's okay. Then I have to take the sack away. Okay. Just, just like, you know, the four sacks you gave on, on the Tua surf rollout. In the, in the that you he threw to Cedric Wilson on the sideline, I was like, "That's not going to be a sack, brother, because it's going to be a Dolphins highlight." <laughs> it, but it, it can be both. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah he, okay. he, sure, it can be both. Um, and for the record, I am not. Even though I might be close, some people might say I'm. I am not the sack Grinch. That's another one of our colleagues. Omar's a sack Oprah, and we have a sack Grinch. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, I back to Brandon Peely. He played big. And if you haven't seen my all dolphin stock before, I felt kind of guilty that I included him in the, 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 it's not stock down, but it's like 10 guys who have underperformed so far in camp. Um, big name guys, starter guys. Hell, I call Durham Smite out. Nothing wrong with Durham Smite, but you're Durham Smite. Like if this is your opportunity to show, Hey, I'm more than Durham Smite. He hasn't done it. Am I deny? Am I wrong? No, I, I completely agree. I don't know that he's had many chances, but you're not wrong. I mean, he's out there with the starters. Go run it, run and get open. Right? No? Sure. No, no. I, I can't argue with you. Uh, um, You know, I, Emmanuel Agba. I'm a Emmanuel Agba fan. You know, I don't like what I've seen. But he's not been good. He's had one good day. And that's not something you want to see from a guy who's making $15 million. Um. No, you know, Ahmed Savan Ahmed. You know how I feel about Savan. Pads off, superstar. Pads on, Joe Schmo. And don't give away, don't give away your entire list, though. Got people you okay. need to go up to. But, all I, but the point is, I put Peely on there. I put Peely on there because there's competition, and Dolphins are clearly saying, "Hey, we're not happy here." This is this young man's chance to make an NFL roster and fulfill his dreams. And I don't know if he's getting the most out of his ability right now, because there are times where you see flashes from him, but then there are times where he's just, you know, there, well, you want to make this roster. You got to do more than flash. And I remember he had one of those practice and I always 
put it like this. I vividly remember the day I watched AJ Francis like realize, and I've talked to him about this. I know. Like I watched AJ Francis realize it was like the day after a joint day after an exhibition game. And he had like had some tackles and had some success in the exhibition game in garbage time. And then Francis shows up the next day of practice and is like busting heads and throwing people around. And it was that moment where he was like, yo, this is football. I know this. I could do this. And he just started throwing people around. And, uh, you know, six years later, he had an NFL career as an undrafted player and is now a, a, a WWE wrestler. Um, love the guy. Great person. Oh, I, I, I know you love the guy. I, I don't know. I'm going to have to double check. His six years sounds a, an awful lot. Oh, a lot of teams. For what his career was. but No, no, no. He, he I think he, he lasted. He, I think he lasted six years. He is six or five. Um. But the point I made, and, and he quit on football because he wanted to go wrestle. Just so, yeah. you know, they offered him tryouts because he was around with the Giants and with Washington. And he bounced around the league for a minute um, after he left Miami. Yes, he did. Um, but it was that practice where the light bulb came on and you kind of and he kind you kind of saw him say, hey, man, I could do this. I want to be here. And he initially he was remember he got waived and got claimed by the Patriots and then. The Patriots tried to put him on practice squad. The Dolphins claimed him back, and you know it was it was and and you know fringe talent. And Peely's a fringe talent player, but today that light bulb came on and he was busting heads. If you told me he was wearing Christian Wilkins jersey, I'd be like, man, Christian Wilkins had another great practice today. He was that good. Man, I I I can't argue with you because I wasn't watching the defense, so I'll take your word for it. Let's move to some. And props to him because I didn't expect it. No, and look, they they're wide open when it comes to the to the backup defensive linemen because of what they what they have is which is and I know it's I know Emmanuel Ogba is listed as a defensive end on the Dolphins' first depth chart of 2023, but he himself said he'd been working at outside linebacker. So and Vic Fangio said Friday morning. I don't know who my fourth, fifth, and sixth defensive linemen are. It's wide open. Uh, some bookkeeping things. Very good to see Trill Williams did not have the orange jersey on today. That was good. Eric Kuzukama was back at practice. Also good. A chain, we already talked about his run, so obviously he practiced. Uh, the guys who didn't, Jalen Ramsey, who again showed up. I saw a picture of it. I didn't personally see him, but I saw a picture on social media where he was at practice. No crutches, uh, no brace. No Keon Crossan still, and no Ethan Bonner were the guys who were missing. And you might know this more than I would. I was told that Duke Riley, Malik Reed also, again, on a limited basis. Teron Armstead, as Mike McDaniel said before the practice, did not do anything in team drills. The plan is for him to do something tomorrow, Wednesday, which, again, it would be nice to see if the offensive line could have a better day. It wasn't terrible today. Could have a better day tomorrow with Armstead in the lineup because I'm the one who thinks – he makes a huge difference. I did see Malik Reed. Uh, I did not see uh, Duke Riley. Um, but I was I watching for Duke Riley? No, I wasn't. So um, I, I will say this. Another thing that stood out to me was uh, Elijah Campbell. Mm-hmm. He, as the depth chart states, he is working as a safety. And in my opinion, my amateur assessment and evaluation uh, he's probably the backup. I won't tell you what he's the backup to, but I would say he's probably the second best safety on the team right now, primarily because I'm not watching Troy Williams and Brandon Jones work. And well, I guess Brandon Jones is working, but he gave up a deep Pele in coverage. And we all know what, you know, Brandon Jones would like to shed that label and reputation that he's not a coverage guy. He said that today. You know, he doesn't want to be known as Blitz Boy anymore. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't want to be X known called as... him. Yes. And it's true. I mean, you got a specialty, you got a forte. I mean, but I've heard defenders complain about his coverage for years, going back to his rookie season. They can't trust it. And that's never a great reputation, especially when you're talking about four years in. Um, I am Deshaun Elliott is okay. He reminds me of who was the safety that what that paired with um Rashad Jones where they when they had two strong safeties out on the field. 
Um, TJ McDonald. Oh, okay. Well, he TJ reminds- McDonald was huge. TJ McDonald was like a, McDonald was yeah. like a linebacker. Yes. Uh, I think Deshaun Elliott's not that size, but they have similar skill sets. Okay. Uh, um, where mm, coverage wise, uh, oh, oh no, no, no. Co- coverage wise, he was a big hitter. Um, no. Uh, and here's the thing: we can say this guy's on the depth chart. Is Brandon Jones is is listed as the first team safety next to Javon Holland? And I have maintained all along that in this particular scheme, which emphasizes coverage for the safeties a lot more than blitzing ability or anything else. I personally thought it was more Deshaun Elliott's job to lose. And now if you were to tell me it's going to wind up being Elijah Campbell in the starting lineup, September 10th against the chargers, I tell you, yeah, I can, I can believe that. Uh, I think that's another one And Vic Fangio is another position where he said, I don't know. Nobody's really stepped up next to Holland, you know? I, I agree with you. If you put ha- Holland and Campbell back there, you have the range and you give Holland the versus. My concern is when you have Holland up close to the line of scrimmage or have him cover the nickel cornerback, do you have a deep safety? Do you have a guy that no- will not let anybody behind him um, in this cloud coverage? And I don't see that player if it's not Elijah Campbell. That's just me. But, you know, that's what my amateur eyes tell me. But we have got three exhibition games to really be able to discuss it and diagnose it. Another another thing that I want to point out is, is X was quite excited about these joint practices, Xavier, because he got to face somebody other than people who run 4-2-4-3 in speed. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was, today he's lining up against uh, Drake Lowe. And we're having an issue again with Omar's internet. So we have to pitch in and find get Omar some better internet, and we'll see. X enjoyed his day. Um, he talked. Omar, about your internet's time. coming on on and off, and you you have to see about getting you some better internet at some point. Go ahead. Oh, stop you it! This saying. is the first time my internet's acting up, isn't it? No. Can you hear me? Yes. No. Yeah. Go ahead. Continue. Your point was. Yeah, X, X, X had a very good day. Um, wasn't phenomenal, but it was a very good day. And more importantly, um, he got to match up against some some big physical receivers. But X talked about the change in schemes and how it's a challenge for him. But he basically said, when it when it comes down to game on the line, I'm going back to what I know, which is press man press. And I think that he will have the freedom to do that. Yeah, but it better be done in tandem with what the rest of the secondary is doing. Because if he, or maybe it won't. Well, he can't go out and you can. You, can. you you can. Do you, you remember can. what happened when the Dolphins had a very, very highly talented player not that long ago who tended to do whatever the hell he wanted on defense, based on all reports, and that didn't particularly play well with either his teammates or his coaches. It rhymes with um, Indomitian Sue. Yeah, but that's on the defensive line, and I don't disagree with you. I hear what you're saying, but there are certain coverages that you could play where everybody else can play zone, and he could be man. And if you let's say you're going to shadow X, let's say let's just say X Stefan Diggs. Do you feel comfortable with Stefan Diggs playing drop figuring out what where he wants to attack a zone, or do you want to have Stefan playing man and everybody else play Stefan Xavier play? place defense to fawn and man and everybody else plays on no that's fine that the point i was making though is that everybody's going to be on the same page that x is going to be man and everything we're all going to be yeah, everybody's on the same page x is shadowing and he does whatever the hell he wants okay and x i will tell you x can handle anybody one-on-one pretty much except for the the, the burners who obviously present problems for everybody like the tyree kills yes i'll give you another one john brown from the bills used to give x a lot of problems yes uh, pure speed Absolutely. guy uh, so. Yes, the pure. Yeah, yes. If we're going to talk about a, a a limitation of X's ability, it's the pure speed guy because they sure. can get behind him. Yeah. Um, if if it involves hand fighting and and ball awareness, he, he he's going to be in good shape. But hmm, just talking to X and listening to X, it didn't seem like anybody was getting a ringing endorsement for for what. Uh, opposite who who plays opposite him and it's interesting yeah yeah 
I mean, it sounded as if, you know, he didn't, he didn't really big up Noah like he's previously done. Uh, you know, I guess two straight practice. Noah gave up a touchdown or contributed to a touchdown today. Um, he had the interception in the scrimmage. I don't know why he didn't big up Noah today. Um, but he really talked favorably for Cam, and I and I understand why. Um, I've always said and stand by this. It's more difficult to go the opposite way where you elevate Cam, and then if Cam struggles, you have to bench him or demote him as opposed to you keep him at number two and he has to work and claw and fight his way if he wants that starting spot. And then you see where that goes. So you could, you could do it either way. I've seen the Dolphins just throw rookies in there like Sean Smith and Vontae Davis and be like, sink or swim, figure it out. And then I've seen them leaving X didn't start when he, when he first got here. Well, but he had an issue in training camp, if you remember his rookie year. So that played a part in it. The problem with, I mean, and I have no issue with starting a rookie corner if the guy has the right makeup mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, temperament and attitude, if it's somebody who can get shaky with the confidence and he gets yeah. burned and then he sinks, you might lose him yes. for a while. And, and and that's what people don't realize what good cornerbacks have is they got a really short memory. They can give up a 50 yard touchdown, and, but they got to be able to walk back to that line and have confidence. Like you got me last time, but I'm about to get, get in that. You know what? Correct. Um, X has that. You know, uh, Noah does not have that. Noah does not own that. Um, I, I don't know where Cam Smith is, and but w we shall see. And I don't want to rule out Eli Apple either because I think Eli Apple's coverage has been very solid. Like any other year, I, I he doesn't look any different than Brandon Jones to me. Not Brandon Jones, but Byron Jones for the last. And, and Byron Jones is a very, very good cover corner. Didn't come down with the picks, but he was a very good corner. I've never, I've never been a super big Byron Jones fan. Remember the first training? No, because you're, because you got a, some kind of prejudice against guys who can't get picks. Tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. Oh man, that was cold blooded. But anyway, yeah, um, true. I'm ignore that. Do you remember Byron Jones's first training camp practice where Devonte Parker kept whooping him? Do you remember that? I do not. You don't. No, I mean, how long ago oh, was man. this? 2020? No, I don't remember. He looked like he had catfished the Dolphins. He was just mediocre. And, and he responded and played pretty decently in the season, but there there, there was just nothing special to him. No, you know, hey. Oh, I, I cannot, cannot, cannot. Dis Dude, the Dolphins fed off the Blitz in 2020 and 2021. And the reason, as you give me the whole, let me, throw my head back in despair or disbelief because the they, they could do that hold on, on let me one. finish yes the reason they could do that is because they had the two studs outside x who not only covered there were stuff. two there was one stud and one guy who's getting help x was out hater. there naked you're a byron hater byron hater no x was out there naked on 70 percent of the plays byron had help over the top and still was getting beat so and he had a he had the best season, but how many picks did he have that season? Might be in one. In twenty twenty, I think he had one, but yeah. that's not, that again, that wasn't his game. His game was covered. You're right. You're right. I'm a, okay. I'm an interception snob. Give me yes, the ball. You are. Thank you. Thank you. Know what? The first step to recovery is admitting that there's a problem. So I'm yeah. proud of you. I want the ball. Like your job is to get the ball. Balls get interceptions. Get you paid. Like. PBUs, except for Byron Jones, and you keep throwing it in my face. PBUs don't get you paid. Okay, so would you rather have? I'll give you an example like this. This the season, let's say Byron Jones had in one of those years, or Diggs and Dallas, who last year was it last year or the year before had six or seven picks, also got roasted quite a bit. And give me Diggs. You what? Uh, give me Diggs. Give me Diggs. Give me digs. Okay. Every, every interception is an opportunity to close out a game and get ahead or close the deficit. Oh, well, every and touchdown given up because you gamble too much is is you know one step closer to losing a game. Okay. Amen. Speaking of the cornerbacks, did any, any of them stand out today? I only saw two. Desmond Ritter certainly didn't. <laughs> corners. I didn't say the corner. I don't care about the oh, cornerbacks. The Dolphins uh, cornerbacks. No. 
No, okay. I, they, they weren't. They weren't even challenged. Noah, you know, mm -mm. Noah, not a great day. Cam Smith contributed to getting beat deep. Um, Eli, I thought he had a solid day. X, I don't even think pass got thrown his way in 11 11s, which, you know, nobody's surprised by that. Okay. No matter how, how much he worked. Uh, I thought the new guy, Robin, what's the new guy's name? Third, tiny okay. guy? Three of them, which one? Perry Nickerson or Miles Perry Nickerson. Horn or Mark Gilbert? Perry Nickerson, tiny, tiny. Yeah, he's a slot corner. Okay. But he's fast. He ran a 4-3-2 at the combine. All right. I don't know. I'm just telling you that that's the book on him. Is just, um, and in fact, he tied for the, I believe it was the second fastest time among cornerbacks at the 2018 combine. The guy's really fast. He's really smallish. Uh, the fact that he's longer than mine though, which is different. He what? His hair's longer than mine. He's got oh, some long yeah. grids. But the fact they signed another slot guy. I mean, they have like, unless my math is off, they have 21 DBs on the roster, which is crazy. I've never, I've never. You, you know how it's always thing. explained to me? Um, DBs and wide receivers, they run the most, which is why you have to have a lot of them because you'll wear out people's legs. Do you DBs know how many wide receivers they have? Ten Trust now. me when I tell you it's nowhere near 21. I have never heard of 21 DBs on a roster. That's, that's crazy. Usually in camp, you'll have like 16, 17 is a lot. They have 21. So, anyway. I, I, um, I totally understand why. Oh, okay. Well, do you want to overload X? Do you want to overload Cater? No. Nick Needham's not working. Nick Needham's not working. Um, Trill is now converted safety. Uh, it, it you know, and you just can't overuse those guys. They got to play special teams. They run more than like they have miles. They have miles per hour trackers on on these guys. How much they run during practice and their speed and all this kind of stuff. Quarterbacks run more than everybody else on the team. Everybody. That's fair. Again, my original point stands. 21 is a crazy number. Also, the fact we should also point out it's like 125 degrees at practice. So that probably contributes to it as well. Is it 100? It's not 125. It's a hot it's, little. It feels good. like 125. I mean, it was today, hot. I got today, in my car and my car said 97. I was like, you're a liar. It's not 97. I was like, no, there's not. There's no way it's 97 degrees. My car hot. said 103. So. Your car said 103. I, th I I think my car is off because I have yet to see my car go over 100. Or your car's like, a lot. Your car's a liar. One of the two. I don't know. Yeah, my car is a liar. It because yeah. it was hot. It was hot today. Like I'm literally gonna finish this podcast and go take a shower. <laughs> well, I'm gonna do a little bit more work then I go take a shower. What else do we have? We had about a minute left. What else stood out uh, from my end here on offense? Robbie Chosen actually was noticeable again today. Continues to do good work. Yep. Braxton Berrios again was very noticeable. Um, did not notice Eric Azukama once in teams. He had a really nice move in the one on one, but it's one on ones. Uh, uh, yeah, I cheated and looked at that. Okay. Um, I think Cole a fan put it up catch. as a highlight. Sorry. I think a fan put it up as a highlight. You know how fans get to record. Yeah, because he, he was able to do three moves in the open field. It's like okay, congratulations, you had the time to do it. Okay. Uh, I think that's going to wrap it up for now. Am I right? Absolutely. Okay, we'll do this again tomorrow. Join practice number two. Until then, thanks for watching.